This artist has just completed a drawing from which we want to make a number of copies. Line drawings, such as this, can best be reproduced by means of an engraving plate called a zinc etching. The first step toward making a zinc etching is to photograph the drawing. The engraver takes a picture of the original drawing and gets a negative on glass plate. Now a zinc plate is coated with a special chemical. If the coating on this plate is exposed to light, it will harden and will not wash off in water. To show the effect of light on this chemical coating, we can cover a part of it, turn on a light, and only the coating exposed to light is hardened. The place protected from light is not affected. When the negative of the line drawing is placed over a similarly sensitized zinc plate in a printing frame, the action is the same. Black parts of the negative protect chemical on the zinc from the light. But light goes through transparent parts of the negative and hardens the exposed coating, making it insoluble in water. The zinc plate is rolled with a coat of dark ink then held in water and gently sponged. All coating on the zinc that was not hardened by light washes off. A special powder is now brushed over the plate. This powder, called dragon's blood, sticks to the hardened coating that remains on the zinc, but brushes off the rest of the plate. When the powder is melted, it protects the lines of the drawing. Now we are ready to etch the plate. This is done in a bath of acid. The acid eats away the surface of the metal not protected by the melted powder. The lines of the original drawing protected from the acid now stand well out from the rest of the zinc. Now we are ready to pull a proof from the completed plate. It is rolled with ink and the roll touches only the high spots, leaving the low spots clean. Now, with the lines of our drawing coated with printing ink, we put paper on the zinc and exert pressure. And the ink is transferred to the paper. And so we can make, by means of heights and depths on zinc, any number of copies of the picture, each an exact reproduction of the original line drawing. But now suppose we want to print a different kind of picture, a wash drawing or photograph. For this purpose, we'll have to use another kind of engraving, one that will reproduce not only black and white, but also tones of gray. This time, we photograph the picture through a half-tone screen. This is merely a double sheet of glass ruled with lines crossing at right angles. The image of the drawing passes through the openings of the screen before reaching the negative. The picture on the negative, therefore, will be made up of thousands of dots. A print of the dots is made on copper. The rest of the copper is etched away, leaving the dots standing out. We now have a half-tone engraving. When ink is rolled onto the high spots, the dots, it can be transferred to paper. So by using a half-tone engraving on copper, we have reproduced a picture as realistically as a photograph. The printing is done on a flat bed press when only a few reproductions are necessary or when time is not important. On the other hand, when we want thousands of reproductions in a short length of time, we'll have to use a different kind of press. This press is called a rotary press because the copper plate is curved to fit a cylinder. When the plate is locked into position on the cylinder, the press begins its job. Blank paper is fed into one end. The curved plate receives ink from a roller, transfers this ink to the paper, and turns out reproductions of the original drawing with all its tones of gray at high speed. Trimmed, cut, and folded, these sheets of paper become neat pages in a booklet. Combinations of every type of engraving plate are used in a single booklet. Zinc etchings, half-tone plates, and special processing in an impressive array of the variations possible in modern engraving. Rotary presses are used by newspapers. But there is another variation of rotary printing, rotogravure. 
In newspaper rotogravure, we start with a layout on which the artist designs the entire page. The layout is photographed, and from the negative, a special chemical coated paper print is made. The print is laid on a copper cylinder, and the paper backing soaked off, leaving only the chemical. The cylinder is now washed in water, and all chemical that was not hardened by light washes off. When the etching fluid is poured over the cylinder, the unprotected parts are eaten away, leaving holes in the copper. Unlike other half tones, the holes or low places in this copper cylinder make our picture. The cylinder is put on the press and turned through an ink bath, which soaks the entire surface with ink. A bar wipes off the cylinder, leaving ink only in the holes. Paper is forced against the cylinder by a rubber impression roller. The rubber forces the paper into the low spots of the copper cylinder and thus transfers the ink to the paper. So the art of engraving in all its phases has made it possible for us to reproduce faithfully the handiwork of great artists and photographers, has made it possible for us to tell the story with fidelity in pictures. Pictures translated into heights and depths on zinc or copper and transferred onto paper with every smallest detail exactly reproduced.